and what made you become a guide? Just kind of talk about that. Um, so yeah, I was moved here when I was three and been fishing. It's been 40 some years. Well, 40 years. I mean, it's been about 40 years, 35, like really fishing, but, uh, um, yeah, my dad took me fishing when I was this tall. So yeah, about 40 years. Yeah. I've been fishing for, I've been fishing since I was a little kid. I was born in Raleigh, kind of grew up in Topsail Beach and uh, really got into fishing in middle school and fell in love with it then. In high school, I, I, I started to figure out how to, how to be a little more effective on the water and really liked it. Went to college at UNCW and wasn't really stoked about what I was going to do through school. And so I, I, I took the last year off and I moved up to Alaska and guided for a little bit and came back and have been guiding ever since then. So um, been, I'd say I've been fishing like 23 years or so and, and like really fishing hard for the last 15 years. And it's uh, that's what I love to do. I'll never do anything else. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, it was way better, Mark. <laughs> What are some ways that you work with your clients and guys that you take out to, you know, kind of talk about fisheries in North Carolina and, you know, ways to take care of it? Let me think on it for a second. Sure. Yeah, take your time. Like you said, we're going to splotch all this together. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I mean, for me, um, I'm talking about conservation the entire time. I mean, that's kind of what I do is, is explain to people you're out here to catch your recreational limit and then I explain to them how you know the rules and regulations are made and how those those uh, limits are are um, put in place so that they understand a little more than just we're catching this fish and we're putting it in a boat and anything that I can you know say hey this is a good fish to release or this is a good fish to keep um, I try to sway them one way or the other but their recreational limit is their recreational limit and I think uh, you know I'm, I'm for being able to keep a recreational limit and eat it I mean that's I'm for conservation but I'm also for reasonable limits and allowing the public to access their public trust resource and uh, eat them take them home I mean you know would you say that a decent amount of people that you take out have a you know, somewhat of an understanding of what that public trust doctrine means or, um, or when you explain it, it to them I would say a hundred percent of them get it and when you explain other things they don't get it you know it's um, there's a lot of it they don't understand that would take a lot of time to explain that you don't have time on a four-hour charter and it's not about uh, all about that but I give them the basics of you know this is why our limit is four this is why our limit is zero on flounder at the moment um, things like that you know and, and that's all you can do is educate them I mean that's fair is fair I mean you, you tell them why I, th I think they deserve to know why um, you can only keep four of this or one of this or zero of this mm -hmm. you know so um, yeah they understand and they don't understand I mean these things are uh, as you guys know are um, very in-depth and have been going on a long time and uh, you know the story of how flounder came to be or how it's in the situation it is now. I mean, it would take a, a couple nights to explain to somebody. So, but you, Didn't I try to. In 2019. That's yeah. right. I, so I try to make it as concise as I can and educate them on, um, you know, this is a good one to release. This is a good one to keep. You know, that kind of thing. These. This is a. Just, this is a healthy fishery. This is a fish that, if you don't really want this, you know. And I, I try to make that clear before my charters. Are y'all wanting to keep fish? Are you not wanting to keep fish? What do you want to target? That kind of thing. Yeah. So. I would agree with Ray a lot. I think it's important with everyone that steps on your boat as a guide. I mean, if you care about a resource, it's a resource that can't speak for itself, and, and we need to be the voice for it. We're out here every day, and uh, it's important to share with, with the people on your boat um, what you're passionate about, it, no matter what it is. You know, that's how relationships are built, and that's how people uh, begin to care about things themselves. And uh, I would say there's definitely specific clients where you, you some clients, you know, you'll just kind of give them the bare bones of what's going on. And then there's other clients that, you know, maybe you're, you can tell already really kind of get it and you can kind of fuel the fire a little bit with explaining, you know, how important conservation is uh, where our fishery is now. And, um, you know, you, some clients want to get on the boat and just go have a good day and not worry about, you know, conservation. But, but after a good day of fishing, a lot of times, you know, the, they've got a heart for that fish now in that, that area and it, it's a good time to 
to share with them, you know, hey, this is an important uh, important thing that we need to stand up for. So, um, you know, it's kind of reading that client and, and, and just pushing them enough to hopefully uh, set light that fire under their butts one day. Um, so you guys are both, you know, obviously been spent decades on the water in North Carolina, you know, you make careers out of it. Um, you know, what are some of the trends in coastal fisheries that you've noticed and, you know, how the progression has gone from when, you know, you first became aware, you know, kind of you got on the water um, to up, up through now, if that makes sense. I can reword it if you need me to. To me, it's become a lot more popular. I mean, it, you know, growing up, trout fishing, you didn't, trout's my favorite type of thing to do. Um, Judson does a lot of different fisheries. I do a lot of different fisheries, but trout's one of my favorite things. But it's become very popular. Um, the younger generation, you know, when I was in high school, I, it wasn't cool to trout fish. Like, I think it was me and a couple other guys that trout fished in high school, yeah. and uh, and it just wasn't a cool thing to do. And um, now, I mean, these kids are. They've all got a John boat and they're beating my doors down. Where are you catching fish? What are you doing? You know, like, where did y'all come from? You know, but uh, it's great. It's cool. I think the younger generation is really involved, the duck hunting scene and all that, to see all these kids get involved. Um, it's really cool. Um, the flip side of that is it's put a lot more pressure on the resource. So you can't deny that the recreational side of things puts a lot of pressure on now. Um, I've, seen, I've, I've seen more boats in this river this year this year we had a great year i've seen more boats than I, I think i've ever seen in my life um which is i think is a great thing um and there's no reason why we couldn't be another hopedale or 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 venice i've read, just went down there and checked those places out uh, last week i mean it's just you know there can be there can be two industries there can be a commercial industry and a recreational industry but i think it's there's so much pressure now uh on the water that um it's time to start looking at uh, making sure that the public with all these people that are fishing now has fish in the water to catch by whatever means necessary you know I've, I've seen a, a change for sure I mean when I was in high school I think it was starting to get popular to fish but it still wasn't what it is today and um, I didn't know what the heck I was doing you know, I'd go out and, and go fish and, and have stronger days a lot of times than what I have now and I, I feel like I at least know know a lot more um, and numbers of redfish that I'd find and, and and be able to you know consistently stay on and never see another boat which is fine if other people are fishing you know the same fish but it's there was just so much so much more opportunity um, when I was younger it felt like and I've just felt like I've seen the numbers of fish in our area decline and I can't put an exact number on that or anything like that but it's definitely declined it's though. declined yeah. yeah and it's you know I, I'll be on the water nowadays on a flood tide and see five or six tailing redfish when back in high school I'd go out and fish one small flat and see 25 redfish tailing on it and I, I just can't say that that's uh, you know just coincidence I think that our, our numbers are, are declining for sure so definitely in this river I used to be able to run the shores of this river in the morning and we could see the redfish busted on one side or the other and that's how we find them yeah if it was a calm day you would see the redfish busting and uh, pushing white water and, and you know you just I, I haven't seen that in years as yeah. far as redfish are concerned um, so it's no secret that uh, in 2019 and early 2020 has been a pretty hot trout bite um, kind of talk about that experience you know compared to some of the past years where, where it hasn't been nearly as good and kind of what your experience has been through that and um, you know ways that you've noticed an improvement and you know in any way really but you know local economy you know things like that that have you know been on the up as a result of the trout fishery you know kind of all encompassing that's a big question I know <laughs> um, well this this uh, fall and winter has been the first fall and winter I've spent in North Carolina in seven years I've or six years I think it is uh, I've been splitting at the end of September and going down to Louisiana to spend my winters down there and and guide one because of you know the drive to want to sight fish and want to want to catch those big bull redfish down there but two the business just dies off super hard here in the fall and uh there's really you know it gets pretty tough in, in the years past and i was nervous this year being the first year that i was gonna gonna spend the full winter here now that i'm married and 
and whatnot. And I was, we were blessed with a really good trout season. It was, you know, you're able to post some pictures on social media and, and, you know, people are talking about how good the trout fishing is and the phone was ringing, you know, all fall with people wanting to go out and fish. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's something that we could see year round if we, if we had, you know, the fisheries to do it. And we definitely have the, you know, the environment and the estuaries that that could be the case. Um, it, it was just kind of a glimpse of what it could be here if, if we got our stuff together. So yep. that's how I feel about, about this, this season. It was, it was a cool picture of what hopefully, you know, it's not all lost yet and there's an opportunity to, to restore what, what once was. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, like I said, all the boats in the water this year, that was definitely a reflection of the amount of fish in the water. Um, and it was, a, it was a great year. You know, it's just, it was a wonderful year. Um, that's one of the best seasons I've had long as I can remember it's been years ago stuff caught them like that but um, you know most years eh, it's tough you know it's it's tough um, you know it used to be when you I remember when the limit dropped from t- uh, 10 to 4 um, you know and, you know when somebody said oh we got a limit you know it's four fish you know, it's, it's not a limit that is, that's not 10 fish was a limit back in the day and and it wasn't that hard to get 10 not too long ago. I, I think the last, really the last 10 years, things have really taken a nosedive. This was a, you know, I, I, won't, I don't want to call this a fluke this year on the trout, but um, I just think they had a good, a really good spawn. And, you know, we got just had a good year class and, and it was a good year. Um, yeah. It's winding down quick. I mean, the pressure's been on them and, uh, you know, they're, it, it was what it was for a little while uh, amazing but um but it, like you said it was a glimpse of what we could have here and the ability for like as a guide to extend your season out and and people wanting to go and catch these fish um I mean, that, that shows i mean they want to catch them people want them they they want to uh, there's something about a speckled trout people love they're good to eat they're fun to catch and um you know if we could put a little more, you know, look after them a little better, um, I think we could d- do that more often. We could have more seasons where we were extended into, I mean, we're sitting out here in the middle of January and, you know, we're still running trips and catching fish. Um, most years it's, you know, it's winding down, it's done. But um, now, the amount of people on the water, the boat ramps are full. I mean, it had to, I mean, I, I wish we had the numbers on on uh on what was made and mm-hmm. how much you know local restaurants and all that kind of stuff this year how, how well or how better off they were versus years prior i know that it had to benefit a lot of them so. yeah and yeah and i definitely think being out here freezing our butt off this morning is a testament to, <laughs> to that and you know it's definitely yeah. um it goes to say you know when the fish are out there you know people are gonna, gonna keep wanting to go after them and you know when that stock is healthy you know, it's good to you know, keep you guys working and you know all the surrounding things that are everybody from yeah that is, for uh, sure is affected positively as well uh, so along those lines um, you know we know that there's certain things that we can't control when it comes to protecting stock like like uh, speckled trout we got hurricanes those come uh, we got cold kills those come you know there's not a whole lot we can do about that um, there are other issues that we know of, um, you know, on the commercial side of things with, you know, destructive gear that have a, have an impact on these, on these stocks as well. You know, as that process continues to go, you know, things are being done to alleviate that. But, you know, as recreational fishermen, as guides, as kind of ambassadors for the resource, um, you know, what ways do, would you recommend or why would, why is release over 20? an important idea to explain to people to get to catch on um, so that we can you know actively do our part as recreational fishermen and control the things that we can control i think from a from a simple look at it is is it's a mindset switch for people um you know it's so we need to realize that just like having a a live well full of fish um, and a live well full of bigger fish that doesn't mean it was a successful day, you know. I mean, yeah, you caught you caught fish, but success needs to be, you know, uh, kind of evaluated in a, in a new light. I feel like, and um, you know, the the idea of letting a fish swim away is is just as rewarding to me as as killing it and eating it. You know, oftentimes it's a lot more rewarding. Like when you catch a big fish or tarpon fishing, you know, that so many people spend millions of dollars, thousands of dollars to 
to tarpon fish and, and it's all about just holding that fish for a second beside the boat and then watching it some way. And just because the fish is smaller and it tastes good doesn't mean you can't have that same, um, that same, you know, joy from, from letting that fish some away. I think that, um, at, the more you do it, the more contagious it, it becomes. But, um, like talking about limits earlier, it's like, you know, a four man limit, a 10 man limit. Everybody wants to catch their limit catch because limit. it, it yep. makes them, you know, a badass. because I went out and caught my limit of trout. But, but you know, the, the unsung heroes, uh, a phrase I guess you could use is like, I feel like the people that are coming out here catching 75 fish, not posting pictures about it. And, and as guides, it's tough. Yep. You want to, you want to, you, yeah, you got to promote your business. Yeah. It's yeah. part of the game, but, um, but you know, just catching fish and letting them go and, and keeping a couple fish to eat. If you're, if you're going to eat them that night or the next night, I think it's important. And, and the, I'll let Ray touch on this, but the importance of releasing the bigger fish is, has a lot to do with like the, you want to, you want to go into that? Well, I mean, the bigger fish, the more eggs. I mean, yeah. the big spawn and females, those are the ones that, um, you know, we caught a lot of citations this year that, um, I was able to, I think we only killed two citation fish this entire season. Um, I think, I think I had 11 citations and, you know, those were fish that could have went to the scales <clears throat> and would have been over five pounds, but it were, you know, with a live well full of good edible sized fish. And that goes back, like I said, with the numbers we had, I was able to say, hey, you know, these, these 17s are gonna be a lot better. You know, they're what you wanna take home. Let's let these bigger fish go. And most people were down with it. I, I mean, I, I, most of my clients this year um, were down with that. And I said, you can get a release citation for one over 24 inches. You've got, you know, you've got your, you know, 15, 16 fish in the box. You've got plenty of meat. Um, do you really want to kill this big one? It's your fish. It's up to you. Um, you know, especially if they're paying me to take them to do it. It's their choice. But I do try to explain those are the big spawners. Those are the ones we need in the water. Um, and it, let's get a really good picture and let him go. Or if you want to keep him, you can keep him. Um, most elected to let him go, which is really cool. I mean, I thought it was really, really cool. I was not expecting that uh, from a lot of people. And, and like I said, out of 11 fish, only two went to the scales. So, you know, that, I think that speaks volumes of people and, and that mind shift, I believe, has started happening. Yeah, I agree. Um, so do you think that release over 20 is going to be a good mechanism to continue that paradigm shift and that you know change in mindset in the right direction and get people thinking about um, you know how they can affect the resource positively and how they can do their part to you know just one at a time kind of make make that commitment to the resource. Yeah, I mean I think it, it opens the doors to a lot of other things because mm -hmm. um, what is the answer to getting more fish in the water? I mean what's what's the answer? You know I mean so if you start thinking about it in that light, then it also opens the door to conversations about slot sizes and how do we manage for trophy fish? How do we move forward looking at uh, what size fish do we want to catch? Um, you know, there's places that you can catch 100 fish in the state or in the United States that, and then keep them at 12 inches. I mean, is that what we want? You know, um, I think it's, it's a step in the right direction. If you look at it, uh, like in, in contrast it to managing deer, you know, with, uh, um, and I'm not really up on all that, but you know, when they manage deer herds for size and trophies, um, it tends to work and, you know, there's success for it. So yeah, I mean, managing, uh, fish, if you're putting bigger fish back, it's more eggs in the water. You're going to have better spawns and we're going to have more, you know, those fish are, are going to have a, a higher chance of, um, making more i mean it's that simple yeah i think that release over 20 is going to be a great teaching tool um one for for guides that decide to step on board and and say hey you know this we, I, i've i've kind of chosen to try to release fish over 20 um this year and um sharing that with their clients and, and telling them why and teaching them why and uh, i also think for for you know young kids and college kids and you know just recreational fishermen that decide to do it and they've got their buddies on the boat and they go catch 50 trout in a day and one guy's letting go all the 20 inch fish and he gets to you know tell his buddies why that's important i think um you know whether that that fish swims off and gets caught by someone else and kept or it gets swims into a net one day and dies it it's still a, a a point of teaching where someone can learn that maybe doesn't know the facts yet and and i yeah. think that saying that you're going to release over 20 will be 
you know, you know, just you vouching to, to teach your friends and your, your local anglers and your buddies that, that, you know, this is important. This is something that we need to be doing. Um, maybe this isn't the fix, but it's a great way to get things rolling. So, yeah, I think both of you guys touched on it perfectly that it's more than just on paper release over 20. Right. It's, it's about the conversation starter that it can be kind of an entryway into other ideas, yep. into other species, and yeah. other ways of thinking about these things. Um, and then it just kind of becomes, you know, part of the culture of, you know, being an outdoorsman, being a sportsman, you know, being someone who cares about the resource, cares about the environment, nature, you know, whatever you want to put on it. That's our hope through this is that it is an entryway into those conversations and yeah. spreads among people who might not be having those conversations otherwise. For sure. Um, do you have any, you know, just general comments about you know, anything else about Release Over 20, um, you know, just thoughts on it or um, partnership between CCA and iStrike, you know, either of those guys, you know, I don't, I don't know if you are with iStrike, but, yeah. um, but you know, yeah. how, how did you get linked up with iStrike and kind of if you, if you have anything to touch on along those lines? Well, I got I got connected with iStrike because I loved their jigs and I reached out and, and tried to get, get up with with the owners and Dave picked the phone up and I talked to him for a while and we really liked each other and um, you know we kind of hit it off and, and developed this little relationship and then I had invited him down to come fish in Louisiana with me and they just you know we have the same mindset of of love you know we both love fishing him and Ralph they're the owners and we all love fishing and um, you know we're all all conservation minded it's never about keeping fish to to you know take pictures of them or to you know beat our chest but um, they're just really great dudes and and they're building a great product and they they don't just care about the money they care about the resource and, and that's why they're passionate about what they do i think that's important and i think partnerships you know this the whole mindset of of release over 20 or conservation or really any of that if you can partner with these companies that people look up to you know and then that people will use and they're and they're they're talking about it the more talk from from multiple different outlets the better uh outcome i feel will be so i think the partnership with 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 uh cca and i strike can be can be effective and I, and I think that it can it can you know kind of clear up some 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 lines and and, and just show that we're all here for the resource not for our, our you know not for i strike not for cca not for you know my guide business but for the for the fish that's really why we all are sitting here on this boat right it's now. for the fit it's yeah. for the resource yeah that's it plain and simple yeah awesome for the resource don't have to get any more complicated than that <laughs> no, um, that's spot on 